Hello and welcome to Module 5 of Setting up a Journal in OJS 3.3, User Dashboard. Most of the work we do in this course takes place in the dashboard and it contains many important sections and elements. In this video, I'll introduce you to those elements and give you a general orientation to the interface. We begin on the journal's main page. In the top right corner, click on Log In and enter the credentials for the account you created in Module 4. Logging in brings you to your account's OJS dashboard, which should look a lot like this one at first. The dashboard is composed of a thin static navigation bar along the top of the page and a static side navigation bar along the left. These bars create a frame around a dynamic window with section tabs and content that changes based on what part of the dashboard you're looking at. We'll go through the dashboard systematically, beginning with the top navigation options and then working our way down to the left. In the top left, you can see the name of the journal for which you've created this account. If you have multiple journals, you can use the icon on the left to switch between them. On the right corner, we can see the notifications icon. Clicking on it, opens a pop-up window that lists all the tasks that have been assigned to you. We'll cover what tasks are and assigning them extensively in the Editing a Journal with OJS 3.3 course, so I won't go into detail on them here. Just know that if you have them, you will be able to see them here. You'll note that my Tasks icon currently has a 5 beside it, but the pop-up window shows more. The number indicates unread tasks. If I were to mark the tasks as unread by selecting them and clicking the Mark Red button, my tasks number changes. I can also mark the tasks as new or delete them. Finally, we have the user icon. Clicking on it will show us some options. Here we can edit your profile or log out. This section is where you'll be able to input and can edit all of your private and public personal information. This section is covered in depth in Module 6. Now we'll move to the left sidebar. The Submissions tab is where you'll manage submissions to your journal. This is another section that is covered in depth in the Editing a Journal course and it does not require any special setup. In brief, the My Q tab contains all active submissions that are specifically related to you. These can be submissions you need to assign to a member of your team, submissions that have been assigned to you to complete a task, and submissions that you may have made to the journal that are being processed. You can create a new submission by clicking on the New Submission button. The Unassigned and All Active tabs are only visible to editors and administrators and allows us to find any active submissions in the system. Archives show all articles that are no longer in the editorial workflow, meaning they have either been published or declined. The Issues tab is another editorial function that will be covered in the Editing a Journal course. This section has two parts. Future issues is where editors create, manage, and publish in-progress issues for their journals. Back issues allows you to review and edit issues that have been already published. The settings area of the menu includes five subsections. Each of these sections are covered in different modules of this course and most of the work we'll be doing in this course happens under these tabs. Journal settings are the topic of module 8 and it is where we'll input contextual metadata to describe your journal and its policies. Website settings are the topic of module 9. This is where we'll customize the physical appearance of our website, generate some content and explore some other features that can be included in your website, such as archiving and plugins. Workflow settings are covered in Module 10, and this is the section in which we'll configure 
the editorial workflow of the journal, including file management, various guidelines requirements and deadlines for different roles, as well as email templates. Distribution settings are the topic of Module 11 and contain settings related to search engine indexing, payments, permissions, and licensing details for publication. Users and roles is where you'll manage accounts registered on your journal and the roles and permissions associated with those accounts. The next section, Statistics, is where you can access embedding reporting and statistics on your journal. And the Tools section is where you can deploy certain tools to pull different types of data out of OJS. This concludes our brief orientation on the OJS 3.3 dashboard. As I'm sure you've noticed, there are a lot of elements working together within the system to accomplish different functions. The modules of this course reflect this interoperability by building on each other as they walk you through the step-by-step -step process of developing your journal. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you again in the next module.